Morning guys, welcome back to Wilder Hybrid Adventures. I'm CJ, down here to my left is Kai and we are doing the ultimate final section of the North Downs Way. And to be fair, after yesterday, after the previous video, I'm kind of ready to get this trail done. I'm working with a half working camera. Um, my hand is doing much better overnight. I wasn't sure it would be okay, but definitely not broken, thankfully. Um, but yeah, we've got about 12 miles to Dover. So I wouldn't usually condone graffiti at all, but that is actually pretty darn good. Not gonna lie guys, this climb out of Etching Hill, because you have to drop down a little bit, but this climb is pretty good one, straight up the coombe. And then I think we're pretty much up top for the rest of the day. But look at that view behind us, absolutely gorgeous. One lone lamb, can't find his mama. Got a few up ahead of us. They've been stomping and snorting at us, but at least they're not cows. And here is exactly why I'm glad there's a fence in between them and us. They're just curious right now. I don't think they're aggressive, but they are definitely interested in what we're doing. <laughs> Kai! Even with a fence between us, they were uh, just a little bit too interested in us. And yeah, I have not even got my heart racing even with a fence between us. I mean, I don't think they were going to try anything, but not with a fence. But I'm kind of glad to put some of this shrubbery in between us because they were going to follow us to the end of the field, I think. Oh, would you look at this, guys. Dover. Nine miles. About four hours for us. I don't know what it is about up here. I keep getting attacked by flies. It's pretty horrendous, and it's like, I'm not a cow. Well, maybe some people might call me a cow, but I don't think so. Um, but yeah, they're just swarming, and they're really, really irritating. I'm just like, Ugh! So what this viewpoint does give us a short, slightly longer way around. Oh, we're looking over this massive, sprawling area that is Folkestone Station. Um, I think it's Folkestone International. Um, unfortunately, we're also getting the motorway noise now, the M20 that runs all the way to this way to the Dover Port. gotta say watching those trucks load on there I think they're very specific truck um, carriers there's no walls on them that's impressive watching them get in there and load pretty cool really I mean watching it from this point of view So where we're at, we're still standing above the monstrosity that is Folkestone International um, Station, but we're actually at Cheriton Hill here. Um, probably a possible walk-in spot if you could find a flat spot. Didn't mind the cows, but um, I don't know if you can see over here, but just over there, you can see all the ripples in the landscape, and that's been caused by millennia of cattle grazing this area. So you can tell how much of an influence grazing cattle have had or can have over thousands of years. I 
So what we're just passing right now, still part of the Folkestone Downs area, um, but we thought come up to Castle Hill, just behind us here, which looks like, and sounds like if it had castle in the title, that it was an old age Iron Hill Fort. Now there doesn't seem to be any information about it, but it would make a lot of sense to have these dotted along the coast the way they are. I mean, they're so prominent just to, you know, for safety as Iron Age Hill Forts predominantly were. So I have to assume, guys, that this right here is where the chains go into the tunnel right there, because that looks like the beginning of it. What a massive thing. So we started way over there somewhere. Such a beautiful area. The only thing, it's just such a shame that we've got the noise of the M20 down there. And, uh, but it's kind of cool to see the tunnels it's going into. Some crazy motorcyclist was just gunned it through there. It was really loud, but this whole thing is scattered with these beautiful little purple flowers. They're absolutely adorable. So one thing I do want to mention, um, it's not well signposted where you go coming up to this hill fort for the North Downs way. Again, there could be cows in here. There's evidence of them. If you really, really don't want to come through here, you could just sort of skip the hill fort, just walk down the road, a little bit, a little ways opposite from the bollards, which is basically where you turn, um, and just pick the North Downs way up, down maybe 300 yards down the road, and that'll keep you going. So it's this site to our left, which doesn't look natural, or to our right, sorry, our right, doesn't look natural. That was probably one of the most dramatic things we've seen on this hike. I think that is really impressive. I don't know if it's natural or if that was actually partially made to be some kind of a hill fort. But again, you can see where the striations, the ripples are on the side, where the cows have turned them into paths over millennia of grazing. Starting to see the white cliffs, and just beyond that, right over there, is uh, Sunflower Ho, which we have explored before. It's a nature reserve created out of the diggings of the English Channel Tunnel. Half of it ended up here, and half of it ended up in France. So we're just coming into the Battle of Britain Memorial. Um, looks like there's a, an old plane here and some other stuff. So we'll go check that out while we're here. Um, but it is a place where dogs are required to be unleashed. Otherwise you get a fine, so glad I rent the small print on that one. What's cool is this is like a propeller, the way they've got it built. We're gonna go check out the wall names, the memories. It's very humbling to stand in front of this wall to know that all these men in the Battle of Britain. Yeah, it's definitely humbling to be in there to know that those men gave so much. Some of them gave all, all gave some for the freedom in the Battle of Britain. It's really, really humbling. I don't know where we're going here. Um, but worth taking the time to just walk around this place, have a look at the names. And actually there's a cafe here too, which is probably worth a good stop for lunch if you didn't choose to go to the pub. One of the joys in life going down steps is to go climb right back up again. It's one of those puds, pointless ups and downs. Ooh, 
and I will warn you on these steps coming down they've used angle iron and it sticks above the top of the steps it's a trip hazard or like a serious trip hazard this would be something that even well especially me could very easily get my foot caught and go down So what you can see behind us is, I think it's called the Folkestone Warren. It's basically one of the few places in the UK that is defined by landslides. Uh, the chalk is sitting on top of softer stones, so over hundreds and thousands of years, it's, bits have fallen off, landslid down, um, and even though this looks like it could be quite ancient woodland, they've dated the trees and looked at photographs, and they're, most of them are less than 100 years old, so land is forever changing around here, and I find that so, so fascinating. As beautiful as this is, these cliffs, the scenery, the weather is perfect. The one thing I find that very, very difficult about walking cliff tops, and one of the reasons why I might never be able to do the Southwest Coastal Path, I get to the point where I find it quite samey, quite boring. And yes, it's beautiful, but I like variety, and this is almost as much, or not as bad, but being stuck in a green tunnel, stuck with your thoughts, because the view doesn't change that much. You got blue out that way, and got grasses and houses that way. So, but if you like the ocean, if you like cliffs, this is right up your alley, this section. It has been really good. I'm just getting a little bit bored and ready to be at the end of the trail. So we're finally back at the Abbots Cliff Sound Mirror. Um, and the way these things work, and I don't know if I explained this in another video, um, is that they would collect the sound and direct the sound waves that were coming from incoming aircraft onto a microphone that would have been down here in front, kind of the way our satellites work now with collecting signals from say space and pointing them at a, a collection point. And that's how this would have worked. And by using these all along the cliffs, they would have had a pretty good idea of exactly where and when, the, how far out the planes were coming um, from the enemy, which, so this is pre-radar, so this would have been World War I. I have no idea what this is. There's no door to it. I think there's some remains of another one up that way. Anybody know? Now oh guys, we are getting our first real look just ahead of us on the path of the White Cliffs of Dover, which means we are about three miles from the station and the end of this trail. And uh, while it's been amazing, this last section, it's physically demanding just because my feet are done. Um, but it's, so it's just been a mental challenge just to keep going because of the lack of, for me, lack of interest um, on this. So just down here, so this is Samfire High, which we've also checked out before in a previous video. Like I mentioned, this is where they dumped all the excavation from the Channel Tunnel to create this whole new nature reserve, which is pretty cool. So I've discovered what these uh, round houses are for. They're for protecting snails from the weather and birds. All right, I know that's not really why they're there, but that is a lot of snails up there. So anyway, we've just got warned that there's some cattle by the gate um, towards the end of this field. So we are gonna have to take a slight detour. They are longhorns, so generally more docile than they are. Um, but we are gonna take a slight detour um, across the bridge and then head, meet up with the, the trail here on the other side of the highway. That 
was a nice short detour, to be fair, you see where that bridge is. We just basically missed this and there are cows right on the trail. So to be fair, we didn't actually miss a whole lot of that. Um, and really, it doesn't look like it was seen a whole lot up there anyway because of the trees. So I think we've got about a mile and a half to get to the station. Uh, we've got all the big ships out here. I can smell the ocean now though. Final thoughts on the North Downs Way. It was way more physically challenging than I expected it to be. There was a lot more ups and downs that I felt compared to the South Downs Way, and I do realize this is another 50 miles longer. But that, once you're on top, you seem to just stay on top for a while. You drop down to a valley, and then you'll go back up again and stay up on top for a while. This one is a lot of up and down. Um, mentally, this was a difficult trail. Not because the trail was mentally difficult. Just where I've been in my own mental space. And uh, it's been a challenge for me, but coming out to create these videos for you guys has really helped me focus and get them made and get this trail done. So I wanna thank you guys for the support. Just as we're coming off the trail, we've got this ruin, which apparently is a Knights Templar church. So it dates back to about the 12th century and the Crusades. Unfortunately, the North Downs Way does not actually have a plaque at the end of it, like the South Downs Way does, or even if you got to Farnham where we started, you know, there's a plaque there. Um, so we're just gonna call the station the end of this trail. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave this video here. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it. As always, take care of yourself, take care of your mental health, and thanks for watching.